So welcome to Bunny's Designs. This is a live show with live peoples. All having a natter in chat. It's recorded for Ustream.tv and also for YouTube for people to watch at their leisure. Um, so thank you to everybody over in YouTube land. Um, so I'm going to have a quick flick. Um, wonderful Suzanne sent me a couple of colour books. So I thought I'd go through some colour thoughts and how I kind of process things in my head. And it's never set in stone, but it's just easier to have a little bit of an idea. Um, and so I've got some post-it notes and I've got a black pen. Um, and sometimes colours and, and certain watercolour mediums pop out to me and sometimes they don't. So, But one thing I'm going to try and do is start colour books from the start. So I'm not flicking to a page. Oh, I'd like to do this one first because I found that I miss pages. So I'm actually going to start a colour book. All my colour books, I'm going to try to start at the beginning and do page by page. So this one would be a practice. Um, so I think that's going to be a more methodical way for me because a lot of colour books I've started and I've never gone back to. So I think I need to start at the beginning of each book and then I can work my way through them. So this one's called Mushrooms of the World with Pictures to Colour by Janet, Janet Bowers and text by David Aurora. Aurora. And it's a most wonderful book because it does have pictures ready coloured, but it has backgrounds. So if a mushroom grows in the grass, it shows clover and grass. If it grows in um, a, a woodland, then it has some woodland backgrounds to it. So I really kind of like that because it makes it more of a kind of a composition. I also have my little book of mushrooms, which my husband bought me. Um, a few months ago and I really like this because again you've got a bit of background you've got the colours and the shapes um, and I kind of like this of how they grow and you have the colour schemes as well uh, so I kind of like this little book um, so I was hoping that I could get a little bit more in-depth colour here rather than relying on the watercolour the beautiful watercolours that somebody's already done. And because I think we've got quite a good composition, we could make it into more like photorealism than, than just kind of colouring it uh, m m magical, magical made up colours, if that makes any sense. So we have our little mascot here. It's Betsy Doodles on her. Betsy, don't just startle her. Hello, Betsy Doodles. So this is our Betsy Doodles, who's our new addition to the family. And I think she's probably going to stay now because she's still a little bit skittish, but she kind of likes this house. So. so Betsy Doodles is on the desk and Alfie Doodles is underneath the desk. So she seems quite a happy girl. Um, and she started to play with my daughter plats newspapers and paper and cardboard she plats it for bunnies to play with and and <laughs> and, and chew and she was started to play with them because they're all over a bedroom floor and she was starting to play with these bits of cardboard uh, so she's actually had a bit of a play so that's really really good so she's coming out of a shell and she does like her feet stretched out so again that's another good sign she's getting a happy girl and she just liked to be under my under my desk. So that's our Betty Doodles or Betsy Doodles. Um, so I've got myself some post-it notes because I've acquired quite a few over the years. Um, now this was actually stuffed to the rafters. Uh, I couldn't shut the drawer, so um, I'm actually wading my way through <laughs> these. Um, but they're very boring ones, so. They're nothing very, very exciting. There's a couple of heart ones in there. So I'm going to go through this book with a few colour thoughts, I think. So I'm going to use this as a practice page. Um, and I think I'm going to be using my pastels. 
because this paper is a bit thin. It's not the thinnest, but it's quite thin. Um, so I think the pastels, I can get some really nice colours. So like the Hagrid uh, colour book, I used um, not exactly photorealism, but it took eight to ten hours. Now, I don't really want to spend that amount of time on this one. But I would like to do... A fairly good job. No, I never can find this page. I felt sure it was in this book. But what I try to do is to put a little sticker at the bottom when I finished a page. Um, so I have the stickers at the top, little blue. Um, and these aren't post, they're post-it notes, but they're clear ones, so they don't kind of damage anything. So when I start a page, I have that on the top. So that's a started page. And then when I finish the page, I put the sticker at, at the bottom here. So that tells me instantly that that particular page is not in there because it is finished. And I have a couple here, so hopefully this is the one. That's it. <clears throat> so this, there's, I think there's maybe six, seven videos on this one. And I've got a little bit of a glare going on there, so apologies for that. And I really wanted to get the colours really, really well, really good. So... I scratched a bit of colour and then I used um, a blending tool. So these are Derwent pastel pencils. And then, as you would with a normal um, professional kind of way of painting, is you put your colour on um, and then you start to play with highlights and lowlights and bringing things forward and putting things back. A bit difficult with this page because it's flat and pastels. I've learned that this technique isn't brilliant. It's just something that I tried to do. And it works if you ha if you can get the colour well rubbed in and blended. And then a very, very light, damp brush over the top to set it. And it becomes a watercolour. Um, now, it technically isn't a watercolour, but it reacts like a watercolour. So you can get the colours you like. And then I put the eraser on certain places to get some highlights and kind of bring this this tree stump forward and then I put a little bit of darker around the outside to make the hut forward and the push the forest back and you can just about get two two layers of pastel now any pastelist or professional artist will tell you that the pastel paper that you use is almost like rough sandpaper and the sandpaper allows you to build lots and lots and lots of layers. But this technique, we've only got two layers at the most. So it just allows you to, to erase and put a little bit of highlight and then a little bit of dark around the back to kind of drop that back. So I think I kind of like this idea. Now, the only problem I have is my hands don't work particularly well. So I haven't been able to go back to this technique. But these are smaller, so I may be able to do that. The other way you can use pastels, and there is another video on that with daydreams, is uh, there's a video um, on the playlist up there, and this is pastels, but the pastel has been set with a brush. So there's no blender, so it's a lot easier on your hands, and you just kind of scratch a little bit of colour with your pastel, and then you go in there with a small brush just barely damp so your page stays flat and all your pastel is set so it doesn't contaminate another page so although technically it's not a watercolor it reacts like it so if you have a little bit of pastel um, and you scratch it in you can manipulate it like a watercolor effect like here and then you can set it instantly with the damp brush so i love that technique and i love the other technique with the blending tool um, you get almost the same effect. Blending tool is more realistic, but of course in this book, 
we don't need to do that one. But the Hagrid and Harry Potter books, I kind of like that way of working. So there's two ways to use the pastels, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to use the pastels in this book. So I've got a post-it note and a pen, and I'm going to just flick very quickly through and, and have thoughts. Apologies for that. That's Alfie underneath the desk. <laughs> we will have an Alfie cam at the end. Um, he knows that Betsy's up here and he wants to be up here, not down there. So he's a bit of a groany boy today. <laughs> so um, I've also got my little book of mushrooms for the colours. So I can get some a bit more realistic photorealism by these colours because you can really kind of, sorry about the non-focus, but you can get some kind of really good colours from this little book. And these are kind of really well drawn. They're drawn as they are, not just my, like my whimsical ones. Um, so the first one here, um, I don't think it's on this page, is it? Have a quick look. These look like berries. Oh, it's no, it's not that one. It's very similar to this one. And on the back and the front, there are uh, nine, 18 pages of little colour, little watercolour sketches. So you've got all your colours there for all your pages. So that's really good. Um, I kind of want to do more realistic ones. So I'm just having a quick flick. can't see that one. So this one, um, sorry, this one looks like... Um, the cockera it looks very similar so this one does here um, oh yes we've got the berries there look oh it's here the little mushroom so I can look for this one and I'm going to look in the index because they're not alphabetical and sometimes you if you want to do certain colour books in a certain way, you need to do this little bit of prep. Oh, thank you, Jane. Yeah, she does look a happy girl. She's just snuggled up. Um, I'm very dyslexic, so C O. No, it's going to be under its other name, which it would be, wouldn't it? Let me see if we can find this one. Because the other thing that's wonderful about this book... So thank you, Suzanne, for sending me this wonderful book. Ah, this looks like the first one, maybe. Let's look up number 10. So here is a description about them, where they're, something about how poisonous they are, a little bit about them, and where what their habitat is, where they grow. So um, let's look up number 10. I think this is it, this one. So it's an an Amantia Calip... Oh, I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> Apologies. Cannot pronounce that. So this particular one is a callip. It's not there. It's not there. I'm sure it will be somewhere. Ah, oh, wait a minute. That says Caesar's. It's so it's this, it's that one. So it's page thirteen. So now the other way of doing it is just to Google. So this is what I thought that was the death cat mushroom. So it's this one. So I know that I can use these colours for here. 
So that's how I intend to colour them. Um, so I will put a little post-it note to say use Collins Mushroom Book Four Colours and use Derwent Pastel Colours Pencils now, if I open this book later on, I could change my mind, but, and it depends on my hands. So that's what I intend to use on this book. So I'm actually going to stick that just poking out a bit. And that's dry. So that's what I'm going to do with this book is to go through it and look up the names and either look them up on eBay or uh, eBay on, you, on e Google or from the mushroom book and also look at the foliage as well so this looks like it's um, fern so this is woodland so I'm going to look up the ferns as well so I can really match the colors and um, so this one is the king one and again that one's not in <laughs> Oh, it's the Ed. It's going to take a while because they're in different orders, but it is in here somewhere because I've seen them. So it's a good little book, is this one? Oh, look at that one. Isn't that gorgeous? They look like the little ones on Disney. This is called the Panther Cap. Um, and sometimes it will tell you that they are used in this one. It, it does tell you that um, oh, it was used for a fly killer. Ah, interesting. Often depicted in fairy tales. So that's the one that we've seen in the fairy tales. Um, and it's called the fly. So it's not the death cap, isn't that one? But you think they're all kind of unusual colours. So again, I want to really pick out the paler ones and the darker ones. I always think that they look like when I was doing the mushrooms, these look like little um, like verandas. So I put little windows in and then I thought well, we could have little verandas so that whoever lives in them can, the fairies can have a little bit of a, a sun, a sun lounge. So I kind of like this little book. It it lends itself to lots of whimsical, um, whimsical little toadstools. I mean, look at those. Aren't these gorgeous? And that's a little bit like mine. Now, I drew mine first. Uh, and I couldn't believe when I saw this. And I went, oh, look, it looks like my drawing. <laughs> So it's like a little kind of a little um, housing estate, shall we say, all lots of houses all built together. And then this one as well with the snow, really pretty colours. There's a peach in there, a nice pale orangey peach colour. So really unusual colours that you wouldn't probably think about using um, and it gets you from the boring red. I thought that's that's the other thing I wanted to do. So the only ones that would be red are the uh, are the first ones. Because they are the red ones. So um kind of like that. So I think um and again, you can do kind of the background. So most of it's grass or it's, it's we have some grass. I'm just worried about the glare um, and clover. So it depends. We've got some really nice drawings here um, and really gorgeous colours in here. Now, of course, if you Google, 
you've got the added advantages that you can you can zoom in and zoom out um, but if you know if I'm at the model show then I can't really get the internet most of the time so I can just sit and flick and if you go away you, and you don't want to rely on um, technology you could I just take my little book uh, my little book of colors or my pastels and I can take this book as well in fact, I might do that when I go to, to Ireland, actually. I'm going to Ireland at the end of the month, and I might do that. I might take the little book and this. Um, and again, start at the beginning. So this one would be the practice page. So if I do this page first, I can feel how good a tiny damp brush is going to do. I can pl play with the colour. I can see how the colour reacts on shiny paper, because pastels normally like, toothed well tooth paper um, so this is going to tell me an awful lot about what's going to happen later on so I'll have two choices if it buckles and it goes funny I can do something different or if I like it I have done a whole page a whole section with a background and and all that so I can decide oh well actually I'll do the background different um, but the foreground I can play with the mushrooms to get the photorealism. Um, I've also scanned this book in my computer so that I can colour it digitally so I can do it in markers which is something I can't do physically because my hands won't pull tops off and put them on uh, so I can do them kind of that way as well. Um, in fact I've just had a bit of an idea is to photocopy them and play with my chameleons so there's two ways I can do that so I can photocopy and use chameleon pens and sometimes you can have two good ideas for the same page so if you photocopy it, you can do it twice. So I shall do that one. They're a little bit small, so I might be able to blow it up a bit. Um, I can do that one with the chameleon pens on on a photocopy. Um, so my pastels, let's have a very quick look at colours. Sometimes you look at something and you get no ideas. And sometimes you look at something and things kind of pop out instantly. Apologies for uh, the little boy under the desk. <laughs> the little boy under the desk. I've been quite naughty. I haven't put my watercolour pencils away so they're, they're not... what it was so again didn't put these away properly either so I've um, I've got three books so I've put a little label in the pocket for pastels so what I could do is I wouldn't take the chameleons with me because I'm a bit clumsy I will take this pouch with me this little Derwent art bag and I'll take the mushroom book with me and then I've got all my pastels and I have two sets in here. Oops, and I have a loose pencil, which is not good. Um, and I haven't put these away properly, so that's really bad. Oops, and I found a rigger, so that's really naughty. I have to shout at myself. That one should be a grey as well. I think I left them out because I was working in them. So sometimes, yes I did, I left the colours out because I thought I'd forget what colours I was using. So you could put, in fact this book would actually fit in here, oopsie sorry about the noise, that will fit in here because it'll just be sticking out the top, so it just will be sticking out the top but you can zip it up. So I've got the pastels, 
and these want to go back inside but again when I'm flipping I find them easier to use like this this is the set that you can buy now um, from Derwent and I love the pastel pencils um, and then these these are the black um, they're called clay shapers so you find them in the clay department in an art shop and these are extra firm now this one says it's just firm but I haven't managed to find another one because all the grey ones are a little bit soft so you want it really really hard so you're grinding it into that shiny paper so I have my eraser um, I have a sharpening guard which I want to put back in there I have my Derwent sharpening guide. Um, this is just, uh, you can use this to make a point or sharpen. It's like, um, it's a pencil pointer, I think. Um, you can use it for all sorts, but it's good for pastel. Uh, I don't tend to use it, but I put it in there. This is the, this is the pastel shaper, flat chisel, but it's a bit bendy. Um, and I bought these and I was a bit disappointed because, again, they are not firm. So this is why, if you ask me where I buy them, I like to go to a shop and have a bit of a, a wiggle. These are wonderful for pastel paper, but they're not wonderful for shiny colour book paper where we don't have any tooth. We really need these extra hard ones. So the black ones are very, very hard and that's what you need. Um, these are Royal Sovereign and when I bought these they were £10 I thought they were this size so I was a bit disappointed when they came to be this size having said that these are wonderful for small spaces so I have my original one which is a Royal Sovereign Limited UK colour shape a firm taper point number six and it's really really hard this is my favourite one I use this most of the time if I have a small space, sometimes I don't blend it with a blender. I'll just use a small brush. But um, I like to have these with me. And these were just from the, the local cheap shop from Wilco's, which is wonderful. They're very soft. Um, and there's a little brush for blushing off bits. And this is what I have. Um, this is um, a what? Windsor and Newton and it's from a little watercolour Cotman set and it's a really tiny little brush so what you can do is if you have a small space you use this I did that with the Hannah Carlson book um, but there are a couple of videos I've done about using pastels in a colour book which is t traditionally not how you use them so I have all those I have my eraser um, and because I've had these out, um, I have a couple of packs of spares. In fact, I don't need that one because I've got this one. And the other thing I do is if I want a sharp edge, I'll, I'll swap out a blunt. I'll swap out a blunt one like this. If I want a crisp edge. Sorry, you can't see that. Um, and you can turn it inside out and then I'll use it for a bigger space and keep my sharp ones so actually I wouldn't take that I would take this little it was a little jewelry box so sometimes you can find lots of little things about that will be handy so I love my electric eraser and then I have my sharp guard sharpening the pencils and I have a scalpel blade which I have actually been using this morning and it's not been put back uh, but you could use one of these, and I think that's, no, that's it, this is quite an old one, but you could, it, you need a proper blade. The best one is the Stanley knives, because you can retract the blade, and then if anybody gets hold of it, they're not going to hurt themselves. So this is nearly all set. The only thing I would probably put in is my water, my riggers to actually set the pastels and you can do that two ways you can do it as soon as you've done it or like in the Harry Potter ones when you're doing a composition what you need to do is you need to kind of do it do all of it 
and then think well I want the mushrooms forward and I want the background to be pushed back so I'm going to put a little bit of dark on the background and I'm going to erase some of the the highlights so this although it won't actually shut at the top and I believe I have one two three four I have five sleeves in here so the Derwent art bag comes with three sleeves and then you can buy some extra ones so it and I've got five in I've had six in before today but this is a decent weight it's all the pastels um, and you can get what we call printer paper size which is, I think is 11 and a half by eight and three quarters that will sit in the top so the Colin Thompson coloring book goes in most of the Bennett Kleins will go in that's the kind of size printer paper size the only problem is, um, although you, if you put this over the top, the little handle, you can't lose anything out now. If I was going a long way, I wouldn't put the book in here, I'd put it inside. I don't normally leave things on the outside, but if you just, these are wonderful for being around the house. So if you want to kind of go in the garden or go sit on the sofa and, and colour, you can put things in here um, or your phone uh, and a little bottle of water and you've got everything just handy. So instead of having lots of tins of things kicking about the sofa, um, you can just open this and, and use it and it's really handy. Now I have three, so I have one with my Derwent pastel pencils. I have one with my ink tense pencils and my Derwent watercolour pencils. And again, I have five. And at the back of the watercolours, I have my um, 24 Derwent graphite tint. Um, and then the other box, I have my Neo Art Bars in. Sorry, other bag. So it depends what I'm working in at the time. So I think that's going to be quite nice for me I'm not probably gonna I might take this with me I haven't decided whether to take this bag or to take um, another coloring book I have to have a bit of a think about that but I'm definitely going to use the mushrooms in this little color book because it's just such such a handy a handy one um, if you have a smaller book then they will go in there. What else have we got? We've got this one, which I, again I may take this one because it's it's kind of it's tiny and it's and I must work in this one as well. So I have the Bennett Klein sketchy stories that would go in, and the little little tiny books will go in color books. Um, the other one I wanted to take was, and I can't put my hand on it. I have the Wizard of Oz and that is a small book as well so this is a great book and again you can use the pastels in this book just scratch a little bit of colour um, and this is watercolour I think this one but you scratch a bit of colour and then you can manipulate it so you get watercolour effects so I love pastels and they're they're very very good quality pigments they're nearest thing to to the real color as we can get because there's not very much binder so that bag is actually all set I've left my little sponge out don't know why that's in there oh I know why that's in there because if I've got a really really wet brush I can twist it and take a lot of water off so it's just barely damp because these pages do not like water that's so that's a that's a good one um so I've got a real good idea of how I'm going to do this now and sometimes that's quite good because you can open a book and think oh gosh am I going to use this or am I going to do something else am I going to use pastel or am I going to use pencils um, so having a bit of a look at the book doing a bit of background information about the colours either reality or you could just open the book and think well I see my purple mushrooms there um, and I want to do a dark a dark evening with a moon that's if that's how you work that's fine that's what color books are they're individual colorists I kind of like if I've got a good 
a good foundation drawing. I like to do realism if I can. Um, and especially when I've always been a bit boring with the mushrooms and just done the, the red the red ones. So this is going to be an opportunity to really get some gorgeous original colours and a little bit of photorealism in there as well. And pastel allows you to do that on really, really thin non-watercolour paper. So and that's another one. And again, this one, it's got grass. It's got clover, um, really go to town. Um, and again, you can either have a brand new shiny little lawnmower or you can have a very old one that's kind of worn and rusty. Again, this one looks like shamrock. This is a, a full color page, but again, you've got the, you've got the, the bark, we've got foliage. And it even tells you where it grows, so you can you could Google it if you really wanted some photorealism. You could you could Google it, and it tells you where they actually come from. So it's a really really interesting book, is this? It's wonderful. So thank you, Suzanne. This was wonderful. Um, again, we've got such a background of where these would grow. Now, I'm pretty sure that my little book is English Mushrooms. The Ultimate Portable Guide to 230 Mushrooms and Toadstools. Uh, I know the Butterflies is England. Um, and I love this book because it tells you all about what the different things are called. There's gills on rotting wood, gills not free. So there's all sorts of little little guides to tell you what to look for and where things are. It says a key to species illustrated in the book. So I really love those little Collins books. But as I say, you can Google it and um, it normally tells you there'll be a, especially on Google, there's, there's um, habitats and things. So really looking forward to some of these. But again, I'm going to be really good and I'm going to start at the beginning and I'm going to work through the book. First page. Then I'm going to work second page, third page, because I think that's how I want to keep a bit more organized with my color book so far. So. Another wonderful book that Suzanne sent me was Epic. And I hadn't seen this one, so I have actually done the first page. So I feel really good because, um, and the other thing I could possibly do is pencil, is actually tick off what I've done. So I could tick that one off. I did get a tiniest little bit of crinkle there because I used, it was a, a bigger space and I used a damp brush. So this is going to be my next page. So I think I'll probably Google just like a Chinese flower. Um, so again, I like to have a flip and, and decide what I want to do. So, uh, so this one I see kind of peaches and, uh, and an orangey browns. And then we have a, an orangey brown stag. We have a little brown bear. I think these look like white flowers, but they wouldn't show up. So maybe a soft pink. And she could have a little kind of purple dress on. Again, I might do pastel in this one. Um, I can't remember what I did with this one. I have to watch the video, but whatever I did with this one, I probably would do again. In fact, I think I might actually use pastel blocks. I think I might use the Derwent blocks, Inktense blocks. So we've got some little buns and we've got the deer, so they're kind of a really red, reddy brown. And then we've got the tall forest tree. So again, that's going to be quite nice. But I like to be whimsical in this book. Other books I don't want to be, but this one I can be whimsical. I can be creative and use my own colours. I think these are bat wings. So she's got to be in kind of gothic, deep, dark purples and blacks. I 
Again, you've got kind of skull colours, almost bat wings though. Um, but the swan white. Um, they might be they might be good with the. This one might be good. Oh, I'm going to write that down. There's a gold and a silver. Um, and it's the Neos. And there's a gold and a silver. And I used it for... I think it was in this one. Again, other colour books inspire me. So um, I might get stuck and have a quick flick through other colour books. And the other thing I haven't done for a long time is gouache, but I can't do that in this book because this is just ordinary paper. But I can, I can, I've scanned this in, and I can use markers. Um, I can use quite a lot of things on my digi art. So again, I've got the best of both worlds. Um, this one. So this particular page is. The Neo, now they're not Neo Arts, but they're Caran d'Ache, very similar. And when I say original, I mean first. So Caran d'Ache brought out a, wa a wax, a water-based wax pencil. Early uh, 80s, maybe 90s. And then they have made them thinner and longer and called them Neo Color 2s. And they changed the binders slightly. So when I say original, I mean they're not what you can buy now. So you can't get hold of these now unless you're very lucky and you find them in a shop or on eBay second hand because they haven't made them for a long time. They've made the Neo Color 2s, but I think you can match the colors up. So I might do that one day as a comparison, but this is a gold and a silver and I use them from my little colour book so I had kind of a good palette and so my Neos are here but because I bought them last I went I bought my near colour twos I had about 30 some and then I I kind of went through the list and bought singles and then a week later I went to London and I found um, a colour book with the original wax pastels um, and they were called Aquella uh, wax pa water based wax pastels um, and they have a silver and a gold now I think Do, um, Karen Dashnia Colour 2 has a silver and a gold so I had a spare square so I put a layer of silver a layer of gold and then I put a layer of silver over the top so I've got a gold and a silver, but then I've kind of got a, a dull gold or a warm silver, depending on how you look at it. And those three were used for this page. And the flesh. The flesh colour. Um, and I think I used just a damp rigger. I'm not sure what, I, what brush I used, but... There's no buckling and this is the flesh that I use. You can see there's not much gone from there to colour the hands, the arm and the face. Um, now I do need to go in and do a few more little bits that I've missed, but the majority of it. And that's why the little yellow ticket's at the top. When the little yellow ticket goes to the bottom, it means a colour page is finished. But while ever there's work to be done, they're at the top. So as you can see, there's a lot started and there's not many finished. So it's something I need to address. And again, that's inspired me to start at the beginning of the book and work through it in normal page numerical order. So again, other colour books, you remember the different techniques. Um, but I did use it from this little book. So again, I could take this. Um, and I can work from my little book of colours. And this all this will go to Ireland with me. It goes everywhere. It goes everywhere because I love it. And it now has a Derwent watercolour brush. 
that's the one I'm using at the moment because I can get it quite dry just barely damp and that's what you need for thinner pages but that's inspired me because I think we've got some metal here we've got a kind of a bit of a maybe skin color so we could use some grays um, and there's a really nice I have a very good collection of grays in the neos and how I've put them in here is how I would like to use them so it's very personal to me so this is the one that I've kind of got some kind of flesh or unusual colors and then I've got my light grays and then I've got my dark grays blacks I've got my cool yellows sorry about the glare and then I've got my warm yellows and oranges I've got my cold orangey reds and then I've got my pinky reds but I can look at this if I take that away and I can see all the color reds I've got now that actually is an orangey color it's, it's flame red um, and that one's saffron and um, that's vermilion and then here we've got Elysian crimson ruby red raspberry um, so the colors of oh that's slightly better so I've got some really nice colors there so these are cold reds these are warm reds and again I've got pinks I've got purples and I've got the, what I call fake colors so I use these for whimsical colors um, I don't normally use grass green and things like that and then this side I've got my my kind of cold greens and this side I've got turquoises and thalos again a bit kind of fakey not real this side I've got my purple blues this side I've got my cold blues my dark blues this side I've got my dark cool sorry not dark I've got my cool uh, beiges browns this I've got my warm so on here we've got Van Dyke brown sepia beige they're cold on this side I've got chestnut cinnamon russet raw sienna they're warmer and then I have the olives I've got the lightest olive to the darkest olive and again then I found another set of original pastels made by Karen Dash and they weren't neos that's why I call them originals they were they were pre neo color twos but they have almost the same consistency and these weren't in my set so they were here now if I'd have bought this set earlier I may not have bought this set because all these are in my set um, but it's about 120 and I think there's only 60 in my set but they didn't have in the neos the ice blue uh, azurite blue, uh, burnt sienna, I didn't have uh, dark carmine, I didn't have middle cobalt blue, gorgeous blue that. But these are kind of again the, the unusual colours that were in my original set and not in my neos. But I think you can match them up, the flesh one you certainly can. I think they've stopped doing the ultra and the reason is the pigment doesn't like certain binders and I think that's why they changed them so that's how they're set out in here but obviously you can set them out in your color in your little book of colors exactly how you want them. Oopsie. so that's inspired me to do that one and then we've got some grays to do the the, the raven um, this one I kind of like probably pink because it's kind of pink and girly whereas she's obviously a fighter um, I'd probably Google and see if I could get some really nice colors for that and um, we've got the gray wolf midnight purple might look quite nice um, what else have we got probably a yellow rose or red so I have a bit of a flick through. Now this one, I'm going to try and do this with it. Again, inspired by, uh, and I haven't finished it, which is very naughty. <laughs> There's some feet. There's some feet appearing. That's our... Betsy Doodles so she's a lot more chilled out 
So let's see if I can find this fish. So they're hydras, but that's not the fish that I was going to look for. I might use the peerless. This is uh, peerless watercolours, which again I use from my little book. Um, there isn't a video on this. I did this when I was in hospital when my husband had a stroke. Um, and obviously I had to sit with him all day. Um, and couldn't concentrate to read, so I I coloured that one-handed. And again, it's not in that one. And again, I've got so many at the top started, and not many at the bottom. <laughs> so again, that's a rather bad. Um, it's the same. As this but I think I did it in Neos because that's going to give me vibrant color without a lot of without a lot of kind of bit I will find it I will find it oh <laughs> thank you Jane Jane just said thank you for bringing it home <laughs> Yes, our Betsy Doodles. I'll show Betsy Doodles in a minute. And she's such a different girl because she's got her feet stretched out. And she's got more than half the desk. <laughs> and she's fast asleep is our Betsy, but she does like her feet out. But she's a bit skittish, so I don't really want to, to wake her up because she might freak out a bit. She's still got that scaredy bit. That's what I was looking for. So these were, I think these were peerless. Now I did a video on this, but again, I've got to probably make notes. Oh, books, books everywhere. Books everywhere. So I've got a pretty good idea that I think that's going to look quite good. Um, but getting these colours with the Neos, uh, sorry, getting these colours with the peerless, Alpha is under the table. <laughs> He's a real grumpy boy today. <laughs> oh, it's just a madhouse here. So there's a cat above the desk and there's a dog under the desk. Oh, dear. So I think these gorgeous colours here. Now, when I've scanned this in, I can do that digitally with markers or with oils or with whatever I want. But physically doing the page... Um, if I did it with peerless, it, it probably would be too kind of, it's it's a wet colour um, and then you've got a damp brush. So what I could do is scratch the Neo colour. Um, and again, this is why I love my little book. Now, you obviously don't have to colour like this, but sometimes you might want to think, well, I really don't have any idea. I love it, but I don't have any ideas what I want to do. So the other thing I do with my colour book is I flip through. So if I use the Neos, they're really, really strong. And um, I can look to see if I have got a colour. Um, and I think that's Thalo Green. So again, I think Thalo Green is going to look good. And then that's a cold blue. So I had that gorgeous... Um, uh, middle cobalt so I'm actually going to put a note on because I have a memory uh, like a sieve so on this page we've got um, number 6 60 middle cobalt blue And I also want, now I may change my mind, but I don't think so because I just love these colours. Um, so this one was phthalo green, 7, 7, 10, phthalo green. Um, 
and I want to turn to the purples. Now, if you're watching TV, you could probably do this and go through the whole book and then it speeds up the process because then you don't have to sit there with a blank page and go, oh, I don't know what colours to use or you've got to then look up, look the book up. But if you do it first, uh, I'm pretty sure that I like this kind of colours. So now I need a purple. So I don't know if I like that purple. It was OK with the, the peelers, but here we've got... I've got a purple violet, I've got a mauve, um, I've got a lilac and a violet, a violet, aubergine, aubergine's a bit kind of, I don't think I like aubergine, the cobalt violet at the top looks really nice. So I think I'm going to use that one. So we've got 6, 6, oops, 620. cobalt violet um, and if you can see that color that's going to be really nice um, that looks like a pearl so if I flick to the front and there's not many things on this page so we could do that there's an there's an orange yellow which goes really pale um, but there's a salmon and there's a salmon pink. I think the salmon one is, if you look here, it's very, very just, just warm. I don't think I've got, I don't want to do it grey. Um, apricot looks nice. Oh, I think I'm going to use apricot. Number 41 is apricot. put two peas in there but never mind so that's apricot and uh, what else have we got um so then we kind of want a, a kind of a background i think that's a flower is it a flower no this the fish scales kind of so all this is going to be a paler version of this so that green again you can actually see exactly what's going to happen with that green so that phthalo green will start really vivid but then I'm going to tail it off here so we're going to have some really nice soft colours. My camera's at a funny angle. Um, and then underneath we can introduce the, the blue again. I think that would look quite nice. Um, but that's not the important thing. The important thing is I've actually got, I'll just put Karen Dash, um, put Neo 2s. So the little book of watercolours is your reference as well because it gives you a scope of about 10 colours. So although I've only got a hundred and, I think I've got a hundred and some, just over a hundred colours. I've got just over a thousand colours because each each square is going to give me ten shades. Whereas when you've got the Neo, you can probably get like two out of it. You've got very strong, you've got weak. Um, but this, you've got a controlled amount of colour. So it works really well, this book, on so many levels. So if you look at your Neos, you probably see this colour. But if you look here, you can see these soft pinks. So you've got 10 shades of colour from one square. Um, and I love that about my little book. So I use it as a reference a lot of times as well. So again, I can put that there and I've, I've got a good idea. So again, using the old books that you've already coloured. Um, I think this could be Neo. There is a video on this one, but it's completely different. I think it's Neos. I'll have to have a look. Um, what else have we got in here? Uh, these are the uh, these are hydras. Um, now this paper is thicker in um, Animorphia by Kirby Rosanne. This is thicker paper, so it takes that little bit more dampness. Um, but these vibrant colours, again, it depends what mood I'm in. Sometimes I'm in this soft 
realism. Sometimes I'm in kind of really bright make-believe. And that's actually flashed out. It's, it's a green turquoise, is that? So this was made with phthalo blue and phthalo green mixed together. Um, and there is a couple of videos on that one as well. Uh, so if you need to look up a particular page or book or a particular water-based medium, I kind of have quite a few in my playlist. Um, and I break them down so you can either find it by book or find it by by author or you can find it by water-based medium. So if you've just got Neos, if you look up Neos, then it, you have all those. Um, so that's going to look really good and again completely different to one of the other pages. Um, she's got kind of bird, oh she's a dragon there, so she's got, oh sorry, I made some little feet. There's some little feet coming out. She's getting so much better. <laughs> Bless her little socks. Um, mm, again, oh, you've got this Chinese, is it kind of a peachy pink, the Chinese blossom. So these could be kind of peachy colours. And then we've got this dragon at the front. And again, nothing comes to mind with this page. I don't have any idea, a little bit about the peach no idea what I'm going to do but I'm going to start from the beginning um, and this might influence this page so I'll have a bit of a think and then by the time I get to this page I might have, oh I know what I'm going to do so again some things happen so I've got no idea what I'm going to do with this so instead of fretting over it I'm just going to turn the page now I'm, I'm going to do this page before I do this one but I'll think of a, I'll make up an idea at the time rather than perceiving um, having a, a perception of what I want to do on here. I don't really have anything on some pages. Again, he's got to be green and we've got the crocodile boot. Um, again, I think pink ruffles because she has a sword, but we want to make her kind of girly as well. And these look like doilies, so... I would love doing this digitally with water. I, I normally do... Um, what do they call it? I use a marker, but I use it as a wet blending marker. Um, so if you've got markers, that's... that's again, I think a red fox. I would have thought of a black horse, but I think a chestnut, and then she can have chestnut hair. Obviously, they're going to have little red gnome hats or green. And it's, oh, it's a red mushroom. Look, it's the death cap mushroom. And so we've got the red, we've got green. Um, Kind of, kind of really whimsical. So, um, again, that reminds me of the Hannah Carlson book. Which I've been very naughty not put back where it should be. I do try to put them in order because if you don't, and you have so many colour books... Um, where are we? Where are we? Oh, it's behind me. <laughs> I think I like the idea of maybe ink tense pencils for this one. And again, the Hannah Carlson page got to think a bit because this page is so much thicker than than this page so I couldn't think of doing it with um, this is pastel I can't think what that is I think I could use I know what this one is again but I do like that idea of that mushroom being that color so sometimes again 
different things influence different. I like the um, the ready ones, but I like the orangey ones, the orangey reds as well. Now there are my Derwent art bars. So again, different. Um, now the colour is a bit washed out on here, I have to say, but um, I like the cat. So I think ink tense blocks might go a long way because you want something that's got a lot of colour. This is ink tense blocks. And I kind of think that might look quite nice. And I love the ink tense blocks because you can get some very nice watercolour effects. So I scratched a bit of colour and then I manipulated a damp brush and I got some really gorgeous watercolour effects. It's flushed out a bit, sorry. So I think I'm going to have a go with ink tense blocks on there. And I'm not going to write the colours down, I'll just put ink tense blocks. I'll put all pastels. I think the Bennett Klein ones are going to be the pastel ones. And again, I'm just going to put that at the top. Um, now I did um, one of these, I called her the Badger Girl. Um, and it, again, it, it took a long time, even though it's digital, it did take an awfully long time, but I love doing it. And just stroke the fat pen, and it's a real fat, chunky pen, which I can't put my hand on at the minute, and you're just kind of gliding it. That's all you're doing. But you can do oils, you can do watercolours, you can do felt pens and then you tap to change colour and it's just literally that easy so you can do that when your hands are really bad so I do like the digital way of doing things um, so somewhere is a badger girl and I really want to show you this digital way of working because it is really good if you've got poorly hands or if you don't want to have thousands of pens kicking about and dropping everywhere. It sometimes takes me a little while to get go, to find things. So thanks for stopping by guys. Hope everyone's okay. We have a full house today. We have Betsy Doodles. <laughs> we have Betty Doodles. I do take a lot of photographs. If I don't find it in a minute, I will give up. So digitally, and she's not there. The badger girl is not there. Oopsie. So that's digital. So you can get some gorgeous highlights. Um, that's digital as well, Bennett Klein. Um, and that's what it looks like when you're using the screen. You have your colours here, you have your, your tools there, and I keep my colours because I forget where they are, so I, I keep a colour wheel so I know what colours are what. Um, and there is a couple of videos on that one. This one's pastel, and that's the Harry Potter one. I think that's watercolour, pastel, pastel pastel and that's pastel um, I think that one's pastel and then I did it digitally as well because I scanned it I bought that and here's the badger girl so the badger girl took hours and hours and hours it's um, and then I found if on the on the app for Art Rage, you can make the colours metallic. So she had a metallic buckle. So all the metal and the sword is metallic. 
Um, but I really went in there to find these highlights and these low lights. And then I put purple where it was black. I went over it in, in dark purple. Um, so there is a couple of videos on that. That's, bef that's before it was finished. And again, you can see how absolutely wonderful it is. Uh, I think the belt took me nearly an hour, the buckles. Um, this is digital and I've actually finished it now. But I used it on 300 on really fine, fine things. Oh, bye Melody, thank you for stopping by. Um, and I love the roses as well. And that's the mouse, I've done that one digital, that's the mouse. And again, the mouse, every stroke was done with a fine brush and the tail and her dress. I think that's before I finished her because, and this one, this is before they were finished. This is just work in process. But again, you know, zooming in and coloring everything with a fine, a fine pen. And that's another one that I did digital. So I do find, I love the Bennett Klein ones because I can do them in oils, watercolors and markers. I normally do markers. And that was the first one that I did. And again, everything's, the scales, everything's been drawn, three or four colours. And then highlights put on top of every scale. So it takes a long time. It's not a cheat's way. Um, that's pastel. So I know that pastel works really well. And you're not wetting your paper. And that was that selfie. That's in oils. That's Alfie Doodles. Um, what was the other one we did? Um, and the other beauty is this one's pastel. And I did the same one with different colours. I do like my pastels, I have to say. Um, that's the Badger Girl finished. So again, highlights. Put a dull colour over the top, then highlights and lowlights, highlights and lowlights until I'm happy with it. And then I put a little bit of metallic on the metal. Uh, but it, it took a long time, all that leather. There's quite a long video showing you how to do that. So it isn't a cheat's way, but it's easier on your hands. And of course, you can colour a colour book in, in markers, oils, watercolours, acrylics, anything that you mark, anything that you can't do in reality, you can do digitally. And, and there's no mess. And that has got to be pretty good. So um, I really liked playing in that. And that's why I've scanned in the entire book. Because that's what I wanted to do. Um, so... I think I'm going to do her digitally. I think a wood and a, a tawny owl. I think these are fuchsias. Um, I'm not sure about him. Not sure about Mr. He could be a white rhino. This one's going to be nice to scan in and then you can create all the doodles again. So I kind of like this one. But I probably would do it in the book um, with this, whatever this was. <laughs> I'm not sure. It could be... It could be pastel. It could be... I don't recognise the colour. Um, I'll have to watch the video. So, But whatever I use on this page, I say a little bit of a buckle with a damp brush, but not much. I'll use on this page. Um, I'm pretty sure I'd like to do a kind of a midnight sky with all the stars and vivid rule of three, bright oranges, bright yellows and bright reds. Um, again, I think the metal, shiny metal and leather I think I might do that with the silver uh, in Neos with the red. I think I'd do that one. This is the one that I did twice. So I did it 
in pastel and I also did it digitally as well. So that was a bit of a colour idea for my wonderful um, happy mail that Suzanne gave me. So thank you so much, Suzanne. She's not here with us yet this morning. But thank you for this, my wonderful books. Um, and that's just a very, very quick flick of uh, how I would tackle the colours in these two particular books. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching.